He's going to read our tarot cards to me. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Welcome to Sky Blue Salon in conversation with Francois Sagan. Mm. model era when I was like 12 or 13 something my goal my goal was to meet Nadia Auerman and Claudia Cindy mm. was only about the girls of course yeah I didn't really care about the fashion back then okay, interesting. but then you know I was like I was a freak for you know uh, Harper's Bazaar or whatever I used to buy old magazines mm. and you know you know year after year you get along with um, Outfits and stuff, you get very familiar with the fashion. So I was like, should I go to fashion school? Maybe because I'm, you know, I was really good at drawing. So I decided to move to Paris, so no transition from little city to Paris um, by myself. And um, I found out that all the teachers were into M. Clay, Conde Garçon, Yoji, and I was into the total opposite. Mm. I was into the old 90s couture, you know. So the designers, the couture designers that you were into were Rene Montana, Mugler, Versace, Versace, Gianni. I always loved Vivienne Westwood. Because ah. Mary Rikishi loves to be a master. And I still love Vivienne Westwood uh, nowadays. I mean, she's epic. She's eternal. Yeah. If I have to, to give one designer, it would be her. Otherwise, there's so many, many, many designers who pretend to be designers, but I think they are just businessmen, businessmen. Mm. And I won't name some of them because I saw some, I won't name them, but some big happening from the last collection, and I was like, oh, okay. We know exactly who you are. <laughs> <laughs> who, who am I to judge those people? Yeah. And so I want to know, how did you create the persona that you are today? And what drove you to do it? Maybe I look like the way I should look today. I mean, it's just, there is no explanation, really. I just, I was always very discreet. I'm still very discreet. You won't see me in the street. Mm. You won't see me walking in the street. You won't notice me. I'm still the same. Today I was rehearsing for the show and uh, I was like, always like, you know, behind and uh, waiting for, you know, someone to call me, I was not like, oh, I'm not a very extraordinary, you know. I would say I love to do like editorials and stuff. Mm. This is fun, you know, but this is, this is not me. It's, again, it's just like a persona, some kind of character. The persona that I imagine that you had created for yourself mm. was not as purposeful as one might imagine. But physically? But f yeah, of course physically I wanted, I wanted some change because mm. um, I don't know, I, I, feel, I feel that the toxic masculinity that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is it toxic? Maybe. But I think if it is, I'm a victim of it. Because I just, I want to look, I want to look like a guy. I just, this is the way I want to look. It doesn't mean I'm 100% masculine. Mm. Just like physically, I just want to look that way. And I think uh, I, I feel better this way, you know? Do you have any, like, 
crazy stories that you can tell us here. I always said this little story when I was um, shooting some uh, some porn scene. I was like fucking. The, it was outside in the forest. I was fucking the guy and uh, and I uh, I just watched and there were a deer just right in front of me watching us <laughs> and I couldn't get how they were. <laughs> they were judging you. Yeah, I was like. Oh my goodness. Did you feel like you were being judged? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I felt very vulnerable, vulnerable when I saw that. Interesting. Because as a pornography actor, yeah. one would imagine that it's difficult to feel vulnerability due to the fact that you're constantly in front of the camera. But the deers... It was like a fairy almost. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Psh. Wow. Thank you very much for having this interview with us today. It was lovely. It was a pleasure. It was. So, we end these interviews by a little bit of a joke. So, au revoir, a little bit of a joke. See you next time. Thank you, everybody.